and welcome to the 2022 Team USA Worldwide Amateur Golf Championships here in beautiful Latrobe, Pennsylvania. I'm honored to be joined by, well, Hall of Fame golf announcer Jim Kelly. Randy, it's great to be here and we're looking forward to a great event. We've got golfers from all across the United States have come to Arnold Palmer's hometown, Latrobe, Pennsylvania. It's the national finals, Team USA, the right to go to Scotland, of course. And a big week is planned, lots of events, most specifically to honor Arnold's longtime executive secretary, the man that handled all the human elements of uh, Arnold's enterprises, Doc Giffen who's got a birthday coming up the 18th of November of this year. And Mr. Palmer said, doesn't everybody wish they had a Doc Giffen? Well, Latrobe has had one. That's right. You know, Arnold and Doc raised hundreds of millions of dollars for charities throughout the world throughout the year. So we're here to celebrate, well, their philanthropic efforts, raise some money for the Arnold and Winnie Palmer Foundation, the Green Beret Foundation, and Jim, as you well know, five lucky flight winners will be part of Team USA Travel to Scotland in 2023 to play Team Scotland. Last night, a great night to honor Doc Giffen, Arnold's longtime executive secretary. Doc, for years, has said, hey, I'm just an assistant to Arnold Palmer. Much more than that, as you probably know by now. So a lot of excitement. Day two here at Latrobe Country Club, Mr. Palmer's course. And eventually, after an exciting round of 18 holes on this championship layout, we're going to crown our five flight winners. Yeah, absolutely. These amateur golfers have gathered from across the United States to come to the hallowed grounds of Arnold Palmer's Latrobe. Country Club. Jimmy, I can't imagine an amateur golfer playing for a greater prize than to represent Team USA in Scotland and to stand on the Swilcan Bridge in front of the RNA building. Yesterday we had dramatic elevation changes, over 400 difference in height elevation out there. The greens here at Latrobe are, well, Arnold Palmer perfect. So let's get to the action. And I am proud to announce that the city of Latrobe has declared August 29th. 2022 as Doc Giffen Day in Latrobe, Pennsylvania. Hey. One, two, three. Thank you, Doc. We love you. Doc, we appreciate everything you did for everybody throughout the years. And again, I want to say the work that you and Arnold did to raise hundreds of millions of dollars for charities, whether it be Adolphi Village here in Latrobe, whether it be for the Arnold Palmer Foundation, the Green Beret Foundation, you're still helping people today, Doc, by raising money today for the Arnold and Winnie Palmer Foundation and the Green Beret Foundation. So you're not done working yet. You got more work to do. So congratulations. <laughs> Good buddy Doc Giffen served in the United States Army. Can I get a hoorah? Hoorah. Can I get a hoorah? Hoorah! Outstanding! What was your rank, Doc? Snuck up the corporal before I got out. Snuck up the corporal. We thank you, Corporal Giffen. We thank you, veterans. On behalf of the Green Beret Foundation, Dan Hilty, 7th Special Forces Group that was with us last night, Major Saponsic, four tours during the Afghan and Iraq conflict. On behalf of the Green Beret Foundation, we appreciate the fundraising you're doing. Again, the work that Doc and Arnold did throughout the years, God only knows how much money that they helped raise just through that wonderful autograph that we've all come to know and love is amazing. Local charities in Pittsburgh and Latrobe, like Adolphi Village. So from all over the world, Doc Giffen and Arnold Palmer, and like I said last night, you gotta think about Arnold's legendary career driving the first green at Cherry Hill, the U.S. Opens. I once interviewed Mr. Palmer and he said he was most proud of the green jackets at the hallowed grounds of the Masters at Augusta. But it seemed that the career morphed into fundraising and helping people that were less fortunate. And I think that's, as I said last night, why we're really here this weekend, to help other people through the great game of golf that we all love, right? So without further ado, Doc's going to smash one down the uh, fairway. Okay. Jim, I'm going to throw it to you. We're just about set for Team USA National Finals here at Arnold's beautiful course, Latrobe Country Club, the great game that you all love, that you're all about to yell for, here to an eight and right down a six. <laughs> We're going to have Doc hit the uh, ceremonial first ball. 
But first, up there on the patio, how about a nice round of applause? His beautiful wife of 45 years, <laughs> Bunny Gifford. Bunny! Well, that's the man behind the bit. I, as we said last night at the banquet, Arnold said, don't you wish everybody had a Doc Giffen? We're okay. lucky that we do. And here to introduce him, the caddy at the Trobe Country Club for 10 years, Mr. Art Hoops. So I'm honored yeah. to be here today on Doc Giffen Day. Um, I started caddying here in 1976. And uh, if you ever go back and look at the old Pennzoil commercials, um, they'd always attest that they would use that tractor on the course. And uh, I can say that is a true story. One year, I decided to be on the grounds crew instead of caddying here at the Trobe Country Club. And the night before the Pennzoil commercial, the old garage used to be down on number five, right, Doc? Yep. I was about 100 yards away the night before the commercial, and all of a sudden, I couldn't find the gear. I ripped the transmission out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Needless to say, I was on weed eater duty the rest of the summer. I never had to touch a tractor again. So that's my story of the tractor. Um, it's my honor as a caddy from 1976. I probably did this almost 50 years ago. I'm going to get a little emotional here, but Mr. Doc Gibbon, here's your driver for the first yeah. team. Woo! You know, Arnold Palmer was known as the king, the king. Arnie's army stretched across the world. There had to be, a, in the old days of yore, they had knight commanders that were in charge of the knights. Well, if anybody was Arnold Palmer, the king's knight commander, it would be Doc Giffen. So on Doc Giffen Day 2022, Art Hoops will present the knight commander with his sword. Thank you. Ah. Hey, John Rusbusson, come up beside here. You know, every army needs a William Wallace. You know, Braveheart. Every army needs a William Wallace. There's millions of Arnold Palmer fans across the world, right, Doc? Oh, yeah. It's hard to say who's the biggest Arnold Palmer fan, so we won't call you, John, the biggest Arnold Palmer fan in the world. Yeah, because Howdy's here. Yeah, Howdy's here. Where'd he go? He's the biggest. Oh, hi, Howdy. Who the biggest? Yes, for sure. So, John, for myself, Howdy, Doc, Arnie's Army, everybody here, Art Hoops, we present to you the William Wallace Awards for just charging into everything and being so valuable to everybody. John, I couldn't have done this without you. And certainly Doc knows what a passionate fan of you are of Arnie, the William Wallace Award. So John Rusbusson of Latrell, PA. This is your championship round of the Team USA National Championship. We will crown five national champions. You will be on your way to Scotland next April with yours truly. Ain't that gonna be fun though? Yeah, right. Doc Giffen Day Golfers, thanks for joining us. Have fun. So we're going to send you on your way. Fred, unleash the hound. Let's go. There can only be one. Remember the Highlander? Oh, yeah. All right. Guys, you know, there's a lot of unique golf trophies out there, but I think the United States Team Challenge here, uh, Team USA, that's a heck of a prize. One of you guys is going to win your flight and head to Scotland. Mark, any thoughts on Scotland, the prize? Always wanted to go to Scotland. There you go. Well, win, baby. Just win. Just win. That's it. Mr. Corser, any thoughts on uh, the award, the Knights Trophy? I'd like to hang that above my fireplace. Wouldn't that look cool? Awesome. Yeah. Jim Lawler, Philadelphia, coming all the way to Latrobe, Pennsylvania. What do you think of Arnold Palmer's home course, Latrobe Country oh, man, Club? It's, it's beautiful. Iron. Always has been, always will be. Great part of the state. Round two, the championship round being played on Arnold Palmer's hallowed golf ground. Is there any tension with that, Mark? A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. I keep taking it in every hole. I, 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 I can't stop thinking about it. It's it's actually making me relaxed. I think it, yeah. uh, it's it's just being grateful to be here is, is all that you really can be, you know, at the end of the day. Right, and you got a beautiful blue skies. And what, you're how many holes into this 
championship round? Five or six. Four. All right. Four, Four yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I thank you. Go get them. Let's go. Thank you, sir. Thank you. you know, the guys in this flight are the best of the best in our old Tom Morris flight. These guys are dialed in. We've got three, two, one, four handicaps playing and competing today in the old Tom Morris division. So our scratch golfers are now on the tee here at the hallowed grounds of Latrobe Country Club. Now in the tee box, out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Jim Lawler. Lawler. Now in the tee box, playing out of Michigan, Tim, 517, Corsair. Now in the tee box, playing out of the rugged city of Wheeling, West Virginia, wild and wonderful, Mark Wheeler. What's it like growing up in Latrobe, Pennsylvania? Because it has a mystical, for us who are from around here, when people hear Latrobe, they always say, that's a nice place I hear. Why is Latrobe such a nice place? Well, when we grew up here, it was Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. Right. right. Simple as that, right? right. And so, uh, you know, there was a lot of uh, family atmosphere, and you were able to play uh, sports. Um, you know, the community backed all the sports programs. And so that was a real joy. Um, you know, we had a great high school, and, uh, and we were able to meet great friends that, that have been lifelong. So, you know, we've been friends for over 45 years. So, you know, so it's a it's a great situation. And, and a lot of times people don't have that luxury in life to have friends that long. So it's been a great, great luxury. Yeah, the, the funny thing, too, is being here, growing up here, working here. You know, Arnie, Arnie was this big larger than life character to everybody but us because we see him all the time you know so when you see Mr. Palmer he was just Mr. Palmer and of course he was larger than life but we grew up here so it was we were all used to him being around yeah. so who was Arnie the guy so Arnie was the guy is is that you know um, you know when you'd go to the Tin Lizzie which is the local local drinking hole here um, you know Arnold Palmer would be in there having a dinner with you right and um so the one night I was in there and they asked me, you know, the only seat we have left is next to Mr. Palmer, would you have a problem? I said, no, I would not have a problem. I've known Mr. Palmer all my life, sat by Mr. Palmer. And interesting enough, um, most people won't know this person, but, you know, it's uh, Ice Cream Joe, right? He was, from, he was yeah. from the Valley Dairy, right? right. And so in there, <laughs> in, in there, this little kid was getting his picture taken with Ice Cream Joe and Arnold Palmer. He probably doesn't even realize what he was doing, but exactly. he was really, he's really locking up history in Latrobe, to be honest with you. <laughs> I love it. Anything, Dave? Any thoughts about uh, Mr. Palmer? Uh, just uh, he was who he was uh, in person, just like he was on television. All the smiles and the waves were repeated uh, to anybody that went past him. It didn't matter who you were. He, yeah, he, was, he was your friend. Mm -hmm. He was to everybody. Yeah. I think he loved being Arnold Palmer. He loved yeah. being oh, Arnold yeah. Palmer. Yep. There isn't any doubt. Yep. I had a guest out here one time on number 12, and he's in the left trap. and. Mr. Palmer pulled up, he was across the green from him, and that guy's in there shaking in his boots. He goes, last thing I want to do is scold one out of the trap and take out Arnold Palmer. <laughs> so so that's, that's one of many stories I have being yeah. around here with Mr. Palmer. Thumbs up for Mr. Palmer. Thumb Playing out of the Latrobe Country Club. On the tee next, Art the Wildcat. Hoops! Now in the tee box, playing out of Latrobe High School, Ed Pappy Guzik. Oh, good ball, Eddie. Stay. Stay. Another turning point, a fork stuck in the road 
Tom grabs you by the wrist, directs you where to go. So make the best of this test and don't ask why. It's not a question, but a lesson learned in time. It's something unpredictable, but in the end is right. I hope you had the time of your life. So take the photographs and still frames in your mind Hanging on a shelf in good health and good time Tattoos and memories and dead skin on trial For what it's worth, it was worth all the while It's something unpredictable, but in the end it's right I hope you had the time of your life But in the end it's right I hope you had the time of your life It's something unpredictable But in the end it's right I hope you had the time of your life Here, of course, with Mr. Palmer's longtime assistant and confidant who brought the human element to Mr. Palmer's enterprises, Doc Giffen. All right, part of Team Palmer for how many years, Doc? Uh, a little over 50 years. We've all got our favorite Arnold Palmer stories. Some are locked in the vault and will stay in the vault, but do you have a couple of particular Arnie stories that are poignant for you? Well, the one, <laughs> the one that always comes to mind immediately was... Uh, his uh, 37th birthday, the first year I worked for him in 1966. His wife, Winnie, uh, wanted to have a, something special for his birthday. And she got the idea and called President Eisenhower, who was a good friend of the, of the two of them, uh -huh. called him in Gettysburg. He, had, he, had since out, he was out of office, of course, by then. Asked him if he'd consider coming and spending a weekend as a surprise to Arnold. She didn't tell Arnie anything about this. He agreed to come. He, uh, President Eisenhower and Mamie, <coughs> Arnold, uh, when he sent Arnold's plane down to Gettysburg to fly him up here, and he came to the front door with a little overnight bag in his hand and knocked on the door. And when he sent Arnold to answer the door, he opened the door and there was President Eisenhower standing about the door, and he said. Now, do you suppose you could put up an old man for the night? <laughs> and that, they, had, they had a wonderful weekend. Didn't even play golf. They just spent time talking and enjoying themselves. Arnie's tractor here at La Trobe. What does this tractor mean to Doc? Well, it means a lot to him. Probably uh, one of his longest commercial sponsors, of course, was Pennzoil. Right. And when they were planning their very first commercial, uh, it called for... Uh, uh, Arnold to come into view on a misty morning riding the tractor onto the golf course. And they were hunting around the area for the tractor. And Arnold said, well, we have one down, down in, the work, in the workshop that uh, should work for you. And so this was it. This is one that had been used on the golf course for many years. And uh, that commercial was such a big hit that uh, Dick Westman, who was the ad agency man at the time, I uh, said, let's make more commercials, do more commercials featuring a tractor. And so it was in countless number of commercials. I actually sat on the tractor with a can of Pennzoil back in 1982 when I came here. You helped facilitate <laughs> that for the old CBS Morning News. <laughs> it's been quite a uh, 48 hours here. Today is at the La Trobe Country Club, Doc Giffen Day. You've been honored, a key to the city, a special presentation in the first tee with the, sword, the swords. 
lots of emotion. No, it's been a wonderful two days. I <clears throat> never in, the, in my wildest dreams would I have ever imagined something like this would happen to me. And, and I, I, there were so many, the Doc Giffen Day, there were so many other people, worthy uh, citizens of the community that uh, deserve that honor. And uh, I'm certainly humbled that they chose to do this for me. Somewhere, I suspect, a little further north of where you and I are standing right now, there's, let's say, Myron Cope, Bino Cook, Bob Drum, and Arnold. They're sitting around having either an Arnold Palmer iced tea or a, a Kettle One saying, congratulations, Doc, on Doc Giffen Day. What a foursome that would be. Oh, my goodness, I'd love to see that group together. It's been an honor and a privilege to be your friend for close to five decades now, right? And likewise, Jim, very much. Arnold always said, pleasure. doesn't everybody wish they had a Doc Giffen? Latrobe's been very lucky to have this gentleman. Now on the tee, playing out of Mohegan Sun Casino in Connecticut, Bruce Two Dogs Bozeman. Good ball. Now on the tee, playing out of the beautiful great state of Michigan, Nathan, the gentleman, Bauer. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you know, all five team members that are going to Scotland next April will be awarded squares golf shoes. Well, they're a patriotic shoe. Guess what? This guy is playing at the Doc Giffen Day tournament, and guess what he's wearing? He's wearing the same shoe. He's wearing the square golf shoe. For a little guy, I get an extra five to eight yards on my drives and straight down the fairway. John Daly ain't the only one that can hit this. <laughs> I love it. Seriously, five team winners win square shoes. The greatest golf shoe out there. They're great shoes, right? Wonderful shoes. Comfortable, walking, riding, whatever you want to do, that's a great shoe. You could have an Arnold Palmer and watch television in them. Yep. All right, get out of here. I'm out. Squares golf shoes. Greatest golf shoe ever invented. There's only one way for you to find that out, and that's to buy a pair of squares. They're awesome, and you never know who you're going to meet on a golf course wearing them. Surprise, surprisingly enough, I'm playing way better today. Uh, the greens are holding, the putts are dropping, it's a... Uh, me personally, I take this all day long. Yeah, I, I agree. This is uh, it's a little different. Uh, Glengarry's more link style. This one has a lot more trees, which we have figured out really quickly. <laughs> we've we've been over, under, everywhere in between, every single tree probably on this course. But they're actually playing. they're actually helping me. They are. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. they're not helping me. But uh, <laughs> it's it's pure out here. It's really pure, and I mean both courses were a challenge. It's just different types of courses, that's really all it is. The yesterday's banquet, getting to meet the some of the legends behind what made Arnold Palmer and all of this a thing. That was a spectacular thing. Very well said, yeah. Same awesome. thing. Uh, very different styles of courses. Uh, yesterday was a little bit more open, a uh, lot, lot of hills. Uh, the greens were a little bit slower. It's more of a, a grip and rip it type course to get after it. Today, a little bit different. You got to go uh, ease back off the tee, a couple long irons, stuff like that, and then the greens are tough. Green complex is real tough. Uh, it's been a blast. Uh, this course in particular was a bucket list course for me. So when I saw that we had the opportunity to play, I felt real privileged to be able to sign up. And then uh, all the charities that this is going towards has been excellent. Um, it's been a fun time. I don't have many of them. They're all here. <laughs> uh, no, when I get back home, uh, I'm going to I'm gonna promote it, you know? Anybody else that wants to come out next year when we do it, give it a go. Oh, yeah, it's just a cool opportunity. Um, I think a lot of us, I was talking with a lot of the guys, we're old, you know, former college athletes who now get a chance to compete in golf a little bit, so it's cool to come out here with a lot of good guys um, and also try to play for something to win. Um, but, but the event's been awesome. Met a lot of good guys. Randy's, Randy's running a, a pretty tight ship. And then you got guys walking around the course like uh, Jim Kelly and Doc Giffen. So it's, a, it's been awesome to be a part of. Oh, it just it's, it's afforded you a lot of opportunities that you wouldn't have just playing your normal home courses. I mean, this will probably be my only chance to play a course like this unless they do it again next year. And I'm lucky enough to qualify. So uh, um, just uh, take, take the leap and join in because you'll, you'll probably get to have a cool, pretty cool experience. Oh, it's great. I... My, if it wasn't for my wife to be here, it would be 
I probably wouldn't be here. She's the one that told me to come here. Oh yes, it, the pressure here is, it's not really on me too, but too much because yesterday I didn't play the greatest and I know that I had to play really good today to compete, but yeah, it would be a great, great feat to be in Scotland. Uh, it's just all great. The, the event's great. I mean, totally great. It's good people to play with. I haven't had any problems, so. And then uh, Randy's a great guy to, to be under, and it was just a lot of fun. Again, we thank the Mohegan tribe for coming to La Trobe to honor Doc Giffen on Doc Giffen Day. It's appropriate that the winner of the old Tom Morris flight would be an old guy from Philadelphia. <laughs> Jimmy, difference between the two rounds yesterday and today? Um, yesterday I was playing pretty well. Today I didn't play that well, but good enough, which is the way the game goes. Special to be here at La Trobe and oh, Mr. Man. Palmer's course. Oh my gosh, it's been, this whole weekend has been amazing. You know, yesterday I didn't know what to expect. Randy, you, Doc, knocked it out of the park. It was spectacular. How would, whole a, event last night how would a guy like you who's been around in business and in golf, how would you define the word pressure? Uh, <laughs> pressure is when you have a big bet going and you don't have enough money to cover the bet. And I know you know who said that originally. Well, I think it's going back to Trevino. Trevino, it's like, uh, exactly. Playing for a ten dollar Nassau and you got a five spot in your pocket. That's right? it. That's yeah. it. That's pressure. I mean, other things are just playing fun games. That's not pressure. Pressure. Go ahead. No, no. What are you going to tell your friends about this championship when you get back home? Man, well, I've already texted uh, a couple of them because uh, a bunch of the buddies I play golf with at Mohegan Sun. Um, they were there when I qualified to get into this, and uh, they were all like, oh, uh, uh, yeah, wait till they, wait till they hear I'm going to Scotland on this. They're going to be like, huh? <laughs> that, was, and that was real? I go, Speaking of going to Scotland, millions of people are going to see this, so officially I'm applying to be your caddy. I'll work for iced tea in a salad bar. <laughs> I, <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Love you. Knock it out of the park. Thanks, buddy. Tom won the Nicholas flight, ironically, on a Palmer course. How would you compare the two courses yesterday and today? Uh, yesterday was a, a lot more open, a lot more of a uh, grip and rip it type course, and then uh, wedge it up to the green. Today was quite the opposite. You had to lay back off the tee, long iron hybrid, stuff like that, and you got to manage the course a little bit differently. Pin placements today harder than yesterday or about the same? Uh, I'd say I'd say the green complexes here in general which just were a lot more difficult. Uh, the green speeds made it tough, so it was, overall it was just a tougher course. Tom, how would you define the word pressure? Uh, it, it, tough to say. Uh, you know it when you feel it. It's tough to describe it. Uh, I, I generally like the feeling, so I feel like that, that's what helped me out. Did you have fun at the event? Of course I did. You're coming back next year? I'll be back next year. You, what are you going to tell your friends back home about this championship? Uh, well, they're all standing back there. Uh, <laughs> Those are go, all the friends that you've got. That's all the friends. No, when I go back, I'm going to, I can't promote this event. Uh, enough. Everybody I know that golfs, I'm going to tell them about it. it was just, it was Congratulations. Happy. Enjoy Scotland. Yes, hometown advantage, hometown favorite. Look at the crowd out here. Dave won, right, in his hometown. Congratulations. The Prestwick Division. Thank you. How would you define the word pressure? Uh, I don't know. It really didn't have much pressure. It was more, I was playing with some very good friends of mine. 
and I'm playing on courses that I've played on all my life and we were just, it was actually the tail end of a very good weekend that we all spent together and uh, there wasn't really a whole lot of pressure. Let's compare rounds. Yesterday, all mm -hmm. right, the pins and the elevation changes today, different golf course, expertly manicured, different pins. Sure. The, it, over at, at Glengarry, you can be a little bit wild. You don't have to be dead down the middle and still have plenty of ability to play the golf course and score. That's not the case here. Today I found a way to hit the ball in the middle, most times, and uh, caught up and down pretty well and putted pretty well also. So, What are you going to tell your friends about this championship, about this event? Well, thankfully, most of them were here with me. So are, I don't are have any to tell. sober? Well, a couple are still okay, so we're, we're, we'll be okay. I can't guarantee that two, three hours from now, but uh, I have a lot of people to tell about it, and I have a lot of people to thank for being uh, for being part of this. This is a uh, I have a lot of people that have uh, supported me and brought came here, and I have a lot of people looking out over me as well. So I'm very proud to be here, especially on Doc Giffen Day. That, that to tie that together with the fact that we grew up here, we played golf here, caddy worked everything, and I get to do that, and Doc gets to see it. I'm very pleased to have that happen. Dave, it's only an hour show. We'll get to the other winners. Do you have any? <laughs> I can keep going. I'm, I'm fine. Do you need a caddy in Scotland? I'd like to apply. I appreciate it, but I already have your three back. Congratulations. <laughs> All right. So Chris wins the Palmer flight on the Palmer course. What was that like today? It was amazing. Just being on the grounds itself was was life changing. So I never never played a better golf course. This is kind of hallowed ground. Isn't it is it? absolutely. Let's talk about uh, yesterday versus today. How was the speed of the greens yesterday and today here at Latrobe? They were lightning fast today. Uh, defensive putting for sure above the hole. Uh, greens were good yesterday, just uh, just definitely nothing close to as fast as today. Were you nervous today? Absolutely. Yes. Because? Um, well, they moved two guys up in the flight, so uh, I went to bed a couple strokes back and teed off the first hole and I was the leader. So um, got a little shook on the back nine, started thinking about what was on the line and kind of pressure built up a little bit, but hung on till the end. Let's talk about pressure. How would you define that word? What's pressure to you, Chris? Just, just starting, you know, thinking about the expectations, where I was, uh, what's on the line. Um, it's, I mean, it's a big, it's playing for a lot. So representing the country is amazing. Team USA National Championships here. What are you going to tell your friends back home about this event? Uh, fantastic event. I, I mean, it's a no-brainer. You show up, you you play well, and um, you know you get to see a great golf course, and, and just to be to be on the day that it was today on the golf course means that much more. Go to Ziggy's in uh, St. Andrews. Annie's the owner. Her husband Paul is the cook. Sammy, their daughter, is the receptionist. Have the wine and dinner on me. Put on my blockbuster. Card. Absolutely, I like it. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, he wins the St. Andrews division. Truth be told, you didn't warm up yesterday very much. You were up on the patio having a breakfast or an iced tea with us. An right? iced tea power aid. Yeah, but I mean, is your game that good you don't need to practice? Um, I just trust it. Yeah. You know, you play enough with Fred Hart, and it kind of gets in your head and just wiggle on. That's Fred Hart, the sandbagging Fred Hart? Allegedly. Yeah, Alleg there's no alleged, <laughs> to this, right? Let's define the word pressure. What does pressure mean to you when you're on the golf course? Oh, putting. Putting is pressure. And how do you handle pressure? Don't look at the hole and just keep my head down after the swing. Who gave you the best golf tip you've ever been given? Actually, it would be Fred. He's the one who took me under his wing and just let it go. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. What are you going to go back to uh, Dallas and tell your friends about this championship? That I won and Fred didn't. Are you going to tell them you had a good time and we no, honored we Doc had a great Giffen? Time. And... Yeah, Doc, and meeting you and then... Oh, the dinner last night was amazing. The scotch was amazing. I'm looking forward to what happens over overseas. So you can bring a few friends to next year's event? I am, actually. I got five that want to come next year, for sure. Do you need a caddy in Scotland? Yeah, you want to. I've been rejected. Congrats. Thank you. Hey, thanks for joining us for the 2022 Team USA National Championships from Latrobe, Pennsylvania. Our five flight winners are headed to Scotland.
and a Arnold Palmer thumbs up, Randy, for organizing the event. Right, it's been a great national finals. Two Arnold Palmer thumbs up for Mr. Doc Giffen and Doc Giffen Day here. It's been spectacular. Doc, the competition worthy of the king. Congratulations to our flight leaders, and we look forward to seeing you at next year's Team USA National Championship. Check the website. Till next year, hit him straight.